for you! Welcome back, I'm Captain Xavier, and I am a shameless fan of getting free stuff. Especially free stuff from, um, people in the community who have developed something and they want uh, more coverage for it, and they send it to folks like me to do reviews on. I love doing that kind of stuff, because, um, there's some really cool stuff out there. And what we have today are a pair of kits from Carl and Dave at Fenland Nerfworks. They sent me these to uh, do a review on, and I'm looking forward to getting them installed. They are, um, I'm not, they're not just brass kits. They are a brass um, barrel upgrade kit. You replace the uh, some of the parts in the original blaster with the parts from this kit, and then you can insert the brass barrel into that, or remove it and fire the original ammo or rival ammo, since it takes out uh, you take out the post when you do this as well. And uh, yeah, you can either fire you know half darts, full length darts, elite or rival from your blasters now, and they're pretty nifty. So I'm gonna install them, starting with this one for the hand cannon epic. I called it Elite previously, and people lost their minds in the comments because nobody reads the description. Tempted to get it wrong again just to make you all lose your minds again because it's funny. Ow. I cut myself. Cut myself deep. I've glued myself back together. I don't know where the spring went. Hmm. replacement spring in there. Now let's see if we can figure out how this part works. Train. Oh, nope. Plane. It's more likely helicopter from the sound of it. Oh, how do you get that off of there? Well, there is just all manner of uh, solvent weld in here, apparently. That's annoying. All right, well, with a little bit of violence, I was able to get it loose. I uh, took a pair of pliers and... Uh, tore off the top and then just slowly popped around the inside until it finally came loose. So that wasn't too bad. So now this goes in there, I believe. Doesn't seem to go all the way down. No, oh, we just need to push a little bit further. There we go. All right, so now that's popped in. And uh, now we can reinstall it. All right, well, there it is installed in the hand cannon. I don't know how easy it's supposed to be to be able to uh, take that barrel out, or if you're even supposed to. You would need to if you wanted to rear load it though. Anyway, very cool, simple installation, plenty of uh, optimization I'm sure that you can do to both of them to get the best 
performance. I don't think I'm getting the best. I think I don't have the best springs for them, looking at their uh, notes on spring recommendations. But they also don't give any uh, indication of what you should be getting. So I don't know what exactly the uh, optimal performance is with these, but they sure are nifty. I like that this one can be easily swapped back to being uh, mega. Mm. That is pretty nifty. This one less so, but I mean, hypothetically you could. You just have to probably glue this onto the brass so that it would come out of the brass rather than coming off the end there. But pretty schnazzy, I think. So my thanks and my compliments to Fendland Nerfworks for developing these kits since they're pretty much drop in. Uh, that is pretty nifty. A little bit of trouble getting that uh, barrel cap off of this one, but uh, that's obviously not their issue. That's nerf. This one, it just falls out when you take it apart. So that's pretty, pretty schnazzy. I like it. I'm going to talk to the uh, designers about what kind of numbers I should be getting and compare that to what I am getting and see if I can't get it to get the numbers I'm supposed to be getting. And then we shall have some firing demonstrations. Thank you for watching. Okay, so you take out the part that used to hold the AR, you put in the replacement part, and then the barrel should, yep, it's got a notch in there that lines up with the notch on there, and that'll allow you to get everything lined up correctly. It takes out your AR, it acts as um, the, the where this used to fit, fits, takes the exact same spot. Then you just put it all back in again. And there it is! The brass barrel has uh, a spacer on it, which makes it fit the, uh, the mega barrel quite nicely, keeps it from, you know, bouncing around and getting jostle and whatnot. It then does have an orange barrel on it, both to keep the dart from falling out, because this is looser brass. It isn't 17, um, 30 seconds, right? It isn't 17, 30 seconds inch brass. It's, um, whatever the next one is, 9 sixteenths. Um, and then the barrel itself is chambered down, so uh, may want to glue that on, but you can either front load it or rear load it if you really want uh, the extra power. Let's see what kind of numbers we're getting out of this So thing. we'll start with the hot chuck, just shooting regular Adventure Force waffles, because they seem to work the best. 92. 93. 96. That is very respectable for that simple of a build. Uh, for that drop-in and for the fact that you can swap it back out. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Now, now for the hand cannon. This was the one that was getting a little bit better performance. We'll see if it still does. 102. Oh, it bounced back through and caused an error. <laughs> 92, that dirt was a little funky though, so we'll, we'll, we'll give it one more. 105. Most I've got out of it was 111. And that's also very acceptable because it's not an unpleasant prime. It catches beautifully. Long handle. But other than that, I like it. Get some last recaps. All right, back for the recap. This is actually several days later. I had questions to ask from the designers. Namely, what performance should I have expected? Because I didn't have any idea what they should have been hitting. So I couldn't really tell whether they were. I didn't want to say, well, they're only hitting this or they're hitting this and have them be way lower than the numbers that were expected and and uh, make the kits look bad. But um, I am getting pretty much exactly what they th said you would get. Obviously, uh, performance is going to vary greatly based on what spring you use. This one currently has K26. What they said is not the most efficient. Uh, and this one has some 
thing that came out of a blaster. Probably something that, I think it was from a, a rival blaster that I upgraded to K26. And it is hitting about 110. And it is, it's actually really, really nice. Uh, the only downside is the small handle at this point. This one also has a small handle, but it's a little bit more comfortable. This one's only coming in at about 100. Uh, but this one I do, I do believe has a smaller plunger tube than this one does. And it might be different in spring loads as well. But um, the kits work really, really well. This one seems to be just a, a permanent rechambering. It doesn't actually look like it's designed to, to easily come out so that you could still fire Mega. That one seems to be pretty... It's snug in there and it doesn't come out easily. Whereas this one um, has that bit that is designed to... Uh, center the, the barrel and it does seem as though it's designed to to easily come out so that you could still fire mega or even shove a rival down in there if you wanted to uh, but yeah they are neat little drop-in kits this one's obviously a little bit easier at least it was easier for me because uh the whole thing wasn't solved and welded together this one was but if you're careful and you're patient and you just use a pair of pliers and and gently crack the, the, the solvent weld around the, the top as you go. Uh, it came out fairly easily for me. Apparently not all, all of them are solvent welded. Uh, I just got unlucky. Apparently so did uh, Chris Cartaya. He also reviewed this kit and, as I understand, liked them. I definitely like them. I think it's a, a neat kit for, uh, for for getting into this kind of an update. I think they, they're, they're like 10 pounds uh, because the company's, I assume, based in England. Uh, so they're not that expensive. They come with the brass and the 3D printed parts and they're fairly drop in. The springs you'd be on your own for, but springs are cheap. So yeah, they're neat. Uh, I did a little bit of cleaning on the inside of the, the barrel, the tips. Obviously you can take those off, but then you have, you know, the exposed brass, whereas having this on there is makes it look much, much cooler and a little bit safer. So yeah, I like them. These are neat kits i'm actually now very tempted to paint this one up in my colors and and use it in pistol rounds because 100 fps uh, out of something that comfortable and the prime isn't bad and it shoots straight i uh i really like this one um this one is obviously i mean it, it just makes my already modular um hot shock a little bit more modular now i've got a nicer brass barrel and that's pretty cool this one, like I said, isn't getting as good a performance as this one, and that may be the spring. It may just be that it's a smaller plunger tube. It could be a number of things, but this is the one that really, really came out nice. So this may become my uh, my pistol round pistol for a while until I get something better. So thank you very much, Fenland Nerfworks. These are cool. I will have the links to everything that they give me links to give down in the description. And thank you guys for watching.